Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot La Mode and today on Hot La Mode we are going to be reacting to a very much so sought after video, Trisha Paytas's Insider Closet Tour. Trisha Paytas is one of the most controversial characters here on the internet for quite some time and they have most definitely gone through different eras of their experiences, whether it was early YouTube days, the mukbang experiences, celebrity big brother, friends with controversial YouTubers. I don't really have any comments on those experiences. Like personally, not really a fan. Don't really encourage the behavior. I do think that this closet tour is chock full of items, clothing, shoes, bags, all different brands from Louis Vuitton to Chanel. I'm here to look at the clothes and the shoes and the bags and everything else. But before we get into the actual reaction, I want to say a huge shout out to today's sponsor who is Feels. So what is Feels? It's premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. And now you might ask, what does Feels do? Well, Feels naturally helps you reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. Join the Feels community to get Feels delivered to your door every month. And become a member today by going to feels.com slash hotlamode and you'll get 40% off your first three months and free shipping. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel any time. Now, if you're new to CBD, Feels also offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience, which can be really helpful for those a little bit nervous. And because Feels works naturally to help you feel better, there is no hangover or addiction. And all you have to do is place a few drops under your tongue, like uh, wait a few minutes and then you'll start to feel the difference. I have a very hard time sleeping Sleeping, always have and honestly with feels I just place a few drops under my tongue a couple of hours before I go to bed and then I settle into my nighttime routine and BAM it's all good it's super easy it's really it's really helpful I have to say and if I'm feeling particularly anxious during the day which is not at all an uncommon experience I take my tincture I load it up I wait a little bit and it helps make my stress manageable feels so good I've already used up my entire bottle <laughs> and it's a big bottle I'm just genuinely always stressed so start feeling better with Feels, F-E-A-L-S dot com slash hot limo to become a member and get 40% automatically taken off your first three months with free shipping. Feels dot com slash hot limo. Thanks Feels. And honestly, I might need a couple of drops before we get into this closet tour reaction. Prepare. So like I'm obsessed with toilet paper when the pandemic hit, I had literally 300. Is this bedazzled? Didn't know that they made Charmin crystal bags, but okay. Before it hit, so everybody was coming to me. They all made fun of me, but I have so much toilet paper. Like that's my favorite thing to buy. So I got that blinged. I got Domino's is my favorite. So I got that old school logo blinged. And I had these stripper heels, and I had these from when I was an actual stripper. So it's like, you know, where I came from. <laughs> and then- Memories the like the corner of my mind. Febreze. Is that real? Wait, this is real? Those are like real items. Those are like not bags. I didn't know people did that, but to each their own, I guess. This is my closet. It's my first it looks like it's a pretty big closet thus far. Like I'm seeing quite a lot of racks. I'm seeing bags. I'm seeing lots of bags. I'm seeing lots of drawers. Like grown up closets. I feel really cool and bougie with it. It costs like $70,000. It's like as expensive okay. to build a closet as it is to have and furnish a closet. Let's talk about some of the things that we're seeing here. I'm seeing some Moschino, that bag that looks like it's a McDonald's. I'm seeing Prada flame heels, possibly from like fall 2018. Chanel, that little birdcage bag. I know her. Your book tote, a Birkin. This is There's my stuff here. Shoe display. Um, so okay. I had originally gotten these pink ones to be my wedding shoes, but I was like, I don't. That's an expensive Jimmy Choo. I'm just gonna be honest. I don't think they cost that much. Okay, six ninety five, thirteen forty eight. Price drop two thousand nine nine five. She's expensive. Oh, she's full of crystals. Okay, we're understanding. Maybe Trisha had them custom made. Those make sense. I, I can do heels at my wedding. So because my dress is really really long, and I guess I'll just say it, I'm wearing a black dress. An insider has leaked Trisha's wedding dress. The insider is. Trisha, the call is coming from inside the closet. Black wedding dress, again, also like for Trisha. 
seems kind of on brand. It's really long and princessy, so I got black Jimmy Choo. Okay, wait. The logic? Not understanding. So it's a long, super princessy dress, and we're gonna wear sneakers. I feel like we, you would want to wear a heel just because, like, the length aspect of it. Maybe they'll have it so that the shoe doesn't actually show. You're watching shoes. And I don't want to show anyone because everyone's gonna be like, that's so ugly. Like, your posture's gonna be. Up. No one's gonna see them. The people saying those things might not necessarily be wrong. Not my wedding to each their own on their special day. And I'm over 200 pounds and I have bad knees. I was like, you know, I want to be okay. comfortable. So I'm walking Health issues, making sense. I shoes. just personally think they're ugly. Um, so while we're at this shoe shelf, let's do like a little bit of a breakdown. I'm seeing Versace Medusa head sneakers. I feel like that's a Nicki Minaj for Fendi sneaker. To the right of that is like a Balenciaga sock sneaker. We're coming down. There's more Balenciaga sock sneakers, but the short versions because they stopped doing the long versions which honestly was a crime for everybody that then was forced to buy the short versions. I'm seeing sneakers that to me are reminiscent of like Jeremy Scott for Adidas. Those shoes were very much so super popular. Those Prada Flame heels, fall 2018, love. Gucci loafer kitten heel sort of vibes. You have the Gucci fur slides. I believe those are from like the fall 2015 collection. Alessandra McKaylee put them on the runway. Very iconic in my opinion. They have a deeper sort of long lasting meaning, which when I put out a Gucci history video, you will understand. Until that moment, I shan't reveal. There's Prada shoes with those rubber sort of soles that we see has a very sort of neutral Prada, 1985 nylon, Pocono bag moment. Some crystallized sneakers over there. It looks like Gucci horse bit slide sandals. And next to that reminds me of like Gucci's big pumps. There's a lot going on um, here. These were my frenemies sneakers, RIP frenemies. I got a matching pair for Ethan for her merch shoot that we were supposed to do and it never happened, but <laughs> yikes. <laughs> Up, had, like, no comment. Shoes. So to me, it like- Oh, okay, sorry. So if you guys have never seen these Prada Flame sandals or heels before, I'm sorry for you. If you have, you might've seen them on somebody like Kendall Jenner, who wore, I believe, a pink pair a few years ago. They are most definitely from that neon Prada collection. They were on the runway, worn with socks, plays into Mutual Prada, socks and sandals, sort of. Five. These also happen to be a reference to the spring 2012 collection where Misha Prada put out one of her most iconic prints. Not the ugly chic geometrics, not the bananas, but no, the flames. Midi pleated skirts that had like flames on them or different shirts that had like 1950s cars, old timey, you know, moments that are prints and or Misha Prada sort of adapted from this old car culture into her own collection. And those prints sort of still live on to this day. So that's really where these, I believe, come from and that's the reference that they are sort of referencing her own work but with like a different spin on it so i'm understanding good for trisha i'm happy for them i'm not happy for them in terms of these these are hideous listen i get it they really are into the embellishments the crystals the encrustments like i'm so happy for them to do that if that's what they want to spend their money on those are hideous sorry like end of day don't really care i have no problem saying it like they are objectively Disgraziad, they're ugly, basta, molto brutto. That's what those are. It's giving 47 year old Italian dad vibes. And like, no offense to 47 year old Italian dads, but like, don't know if that's the aesthetic that we want. So, I remember buying each shoe. Okay, so there's a lot of crystals. You know, there's a lot of encrustment going on. The Versace shoes, I understand. I feel like there was a moment where Versace and the Medusa head on me, like I'm Luminati, was a moment. So I'm understanding why Trisha would have went for those as well. But they're pretty. So like, do I regret buying Oh my God, wait, I'm dead. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these Louis Vuitton pillow shoes. They're from spring 2021, I believe. Nicolas Jasquier's runway. They're very Nicolas Jasquier for Louis Vuitton. He makes an accessory and the people buy it. Sometimes I ask myself, who would buy this? Trisha Paytas happens to be that person. Yes, but do they make me happy and fulfill a purpose in me? Also, these Gucci crystal sneakers. I actually kind of like these. I think they're sweet. I do know that there's people that love a bling bling. Alessandra McKayla provides that. But right next to those, you can see those Gucci big costume jewelry sandals, which I believe were based initially on the sneakers that came out that had the big sort of costume jewelry moments on them, which were runway pieces first and then sort of trickled on down. I'm understanding what this is. Like, yeah, they make me happy to look at them. This was supposed to be my pride jacket. It That's was hideous. It was designed after Kamala Harris. I'm sorry, they what? What? Not Kamala Harris. This is a moment I say to myself, self say I. I don't know what 
alternate universe I'm living in, but Kamala Harris being the basis for a Trisha Paytas custom piece is, uh, <laughs> I don't really know anymore. I, listen, I'm not totally knocking Kamala Harris's style choices, but like out of all of them, I feel like the rainbow pride jacket is not the one one would choose to emulate. No offense to people that love rainbow pride things. I just genuinely think it is horribly tacky. No offense to Trisha, I do think that they are gauche, tacky, camp, and all of those sorts of things, but like, this is too far. I think that's our Vice President, Kamala. <laughs> I don't know how to say her name. She wore oh this God. at a Pride event, and I thought it was really <sighs> iconic. We Stop! Stop. There's just so much with this video. Trisha, Kamala Harris, a duo I didn't know existed. I'm lost. Stones lost for words. Because you can't wear it. It's stiff as a board. I could not get in there. Yeah. You know, maybe that's a good thing. <sighs> Oh, this Maybe was like the ugly thing. Balenciaga shirt that everyone made fun of me for. Oh my god, it's stop, wait. Shirt. I do remember this. This was years ago. But I believe that these Balenciaga shirts are from like spring 2018. And they were runway moments. They were part of Dina's Margiela era at Balenciaga, if you will. Dina, if you do not know, went from Marc Jacobs' Louis Vuitton to Margiela and then to Balenciaga. And I think that in reality, he picked up a bit of Margiela-ism at Margiela and then brought it over to Balenciaga. And there was a sort of period where you had a lot of these deconstruction, reconstruction sort of styles. And that's what's going on here. Trisha buying it shouldn't shock me but it does. Let's hear. Connected. And it's like so ugly. <laughs> and it was like, I don't know, well, it's like a $2,000 shirt, but now people really want Do you think they knew it was ugly at that point? Do you think they did it on purpose? I presume that Insider fact checked. $12.90 for that. It's no offense, it's really not appropriate. Not the shirt. But yeah, it's like a shirt on a shirt. I, I don't know. Again, I think like designers are trolling people with money because I spent $2,000 for this. Ugly. Okay, but you paid for it. A little bit of the blame has to be on you. This okay. is more of my favorite. So I'm seeing here some Birkins, Chanel encrusted, looks like a Deville coat up top. Some off-white on the bottom there. There's that white and black bag on the right. And then the reflective one has those two little arrows up, which I think is like a Virgil Abloh thing. The Chanel wallet. Okay, let's let's Favorite see. Favorite things, just again, stuff that's like aesthetically pleasing for my eye. These are my two Birkins. It's my most used and my least. The Catherine O'Hara candle is making this all worth it. Favorite, this one was supposed to be caramel and I turned out brown or something. I like... Caramel is a brown. Maybe Trisha is like color swatching the Birkins, in which case like, do you, but that color is not too far away from like caramel to me. That to me is the ugliest purse I own. This one I actually use a lot. That's my little black one. I like the little black one. Home run. That's cute. These are my Dolce & Gabbana that I got in New York. These were literally like- We're $10. kidding, we're not, this is a joke. This is a joke. Lower glasses, we're, we're kidding. Dancing. This is- Again, when I just had- Trisha is a fashion troll. I don't know if they realize that about themselves yet at this point, but like $8,000 on those? That's a choice. Money to throw, I don't even know who that person that, is, but is I don't know, work. I kind of like oh live for these. I literally I can't, I can't handle it. This is like too much now, for me. So. I probably would wear these on a daily basis now because I, I'm obsessed. This is like the one thing I don't regret buying in my closet. <laughs> this is the one thing? Crocs up there. Okay, that embellished Crocs. This is a lot of embellished stuff. People are doing it now, which I loved, and this was a lot of my OnlyFans outfits that made me the most money, so I kind of just okay. came here to prosper like more money. I think that was my first million dollars, and I was so excited in like a, like a week or something. Okay, so I was like kind of wondering where all the money for these things came. Seems like OnlyFans is the cause of this closet. So I kept all this for like, <laughs> for good luck. And then this is a Sad Boy 2005, my clothing oh my line. This is a collaborative with Marsan Brands. Oh my and God. these should be out. At least they don't just make merch that's a t-shirt. There is, I guess, what you could call a teddy bear applique. I guess. It's not boring merch, so I guess that's good. Product placement is very, very, very much so involved in these videos. Over here, we have my blinged up boots. These are the ones I wear on tour. These were these pink ones that I I've wore. never seen so many um, all right, Swarovski so crystals in my is life. Sort of like the centerpiece. This is like, I would say these are all my favorite things. So okay. the top is like my pink bling things. Versace bag to the right, the pink crocodile Birkin, the, the crystallized Air Force Ones, the Gucci sunglasses, which I will say years ago, I reacted to a Trisha Paytas unboxing and there was a pair of Gucci sunglasses and 
I said to myself, self said I, oh God, I would never, ever, I'd never buy those kinds of sunglasses. And then Trisha at that point was like, oh, I lost a crystal in my sunglasses. So it was kind of an issue. I had to bring it back to Gucci and have them re embellish my sunglasses. I did happen to get a pair of Gucci sunglasses. I did not pay for them. I will say I didn't steal them either, but things happen such as life. Nothing fell off the truck, I promise. A little crystal fell off. And now I am like Trisha Paytas and I have to go to the Gucci store eventually and have them re embellish my sunglasses. Nobody needed that information, but now you have it. Dolce & Gabbana's and these are like the first expensive. What is with the sunglass? That's far too much to pay for a pair of sunglasses. I'm confused. I, I'm genuinely confused. Unless those are like hand blown glass flowers in some like Venetian tiny little studio where they've been making them like that for 4,000 years and goddamn Emperor Nero himself was getting his sunglasses custom made there. This is, I, that's too much to pay for sunglasses. Sorry, because honestly, most fashion brands, luxury fashion brands have all one or two people making their sunglasses all together. So you know what I mean? Like these big brands will have one factory where everybody's sunglasses are made. So it's not like, you know, they have some artisans in there. Maybe Dolce & Gabbana does. I don't think so, but maybe they do. But that's a price. That's a price and a half. Item I bought when I made money on YouTube. That was my first Birkin. So these are like my first, these are like baby's first things. My baby's first shoes. Oh my no, God. but that's my baby's first Birkin. That's an expensive Birkin. She has a lot of Birkins too, if we're being honest. And, but I never use it because it's kind of dirty. I think it's used because it was like one of a kind. So I don't really like. One of a kind pink. That crocodile did its thing for that, but. Yeah, but it's my first, so I kept it. So this is the Paris Hilton Birkin that I saw her had. And again, I wonder I if so like, Hermes oh, pre Swarovski like crystals a Birkin. You think they do that? I feel like they don't. Yeah, Birkins are not cute unless they're bling. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Birkins are really so ugly, actually. They're but you have five. Somebody explain to me the logic. I don't think they're totally ugly. I think when they're like kept in this pristine quality, it like loses effect to me because it doesn't feel like a real thing. They've grown on me. I understand they're handmade by one person and I really respect that. It's true craftsmanship that's been around for years and years and years and years. If I really found something so hideous, I don't know if I'd buy it. I don't think I'd buy it more than once. I don't think I'd buy that thing I found hideous five different times and then have it custom embellished either. I don't know why people have them. <laughs> they're Your so people. Ugly. That is hideous. That is, that is it. I'm pretty positive that the trans flag eats her up every day of the week. It's more aesthetically pleasing in, in my humble opinion. Just saying. This is my prized possession. I literally just got a Happy Meal at McDonald's and had my friend bring it up. I personally thought that this was a Moschino bag. Again, fall 2014 was a very sort of iconic Moschino collection. I believe it was Jeremy Scott's first at the brand. And essentially, he did this whole thing that was based on McDonald's, played on sort of elements, Happy Meals, and models that were dressed like McDonald's workers. I just presume that Trisha had this Moschino bag blinged up. Guess not. Seems like just a regular schmegular Happy Meal. Got the blinged out treatment, good to know. My... Are we gonna skip that Moschino bag? Insider, whoever edited this, that is inappropriate. I'm gonna talk about it because I can. So that Moschino bag, fall 2014, essentially it is a take on a Chanel flap bag. Franco Moschino was a prankster. He would like knock off different elements of these sort of big brands. Chanel was one that he sort of loved to do. So I think Jeremy was like falling in line with that and so created this Moschino bag that looks very similar to a Chanel flat bag. If you look at it, it sort of like plays on this idea of for the classes versus for the masses. And I think that's a brilliant commentary on luxury fashion. So she deserves her due. She deserved her close up and she didn't get it and I'm upset. Rolex says, do I ever- For a Rolex, <laughs> please. <laughs> you have a phone. I don't know why you need a watch. Early in my life, will never own a watch. Sorry, like will not ever spend that kind of money on that. But this, <laughs> this bird cage. When I was doing OnlyFans, I'd- This Chanel bag, I believe, is from Prefall 2020, which in reality, the set was pretty much set up like 31 Rue de Cambon. Maybe it was in 31 Rue de Cambon, but I feel like it wasn't. But 31 Rue de Cambon is where the Chanel sort of flagship store is. It also happens to be where the Haute Couture Salon and I believe the Atelier is. And also it happens to be where Coco Chanel's own apartment was. 
Coco Chanel used to sit on this little staircase where there was like a mirror. Chanel used to sit there so she could like watch the show and the reactions to the show and the models while nobody could actually see her because the mirrors only reflected one way. Up from her little staircase was her private apartment, which Chanel has kept 99% true to when she was still living there. And if you look inside of the apartment, you can see all these little tchotchkes. And one of the tchotchkes, or a couple of the tchotchkes, are these little bird cages, which I'm pretty positive Virginia Bjord was referencing. Also, these Minotti air bags are expensive. Pretty positive. These usually run around like 10K. There were so little that went into actual production that I'm sure that over the next however many years, they will climb in price. So like if you want to talk about investment, I feel like these are a real investment. And then I saw the bill for that. It was like $20,000 for that birdcage. I've never used it. I oh thought it was like maybe $4,000, like a regular Chanel purse. $20,000 and I oh, regretted no. it. And I no. still regret no, no, no. it. Sometimes I think they like just troll people with money. <laughs> They're like, we're gonna send you a $20,000 like birdcage that doesn't work. You bought it. You're paying for the troll. <laughs> I don't know. Just say. My style is definitely. Oh my god. It's definitely tacky. I'm I don't really get the whole like diamond thing. I like an oversized style. shield. I don't use Chanel sunglass. That much of anything in here. So. So they don't use a lot of it. I'm confused. If you're gonna buy, it, you should use it. That's my humblest opinion. Again, unless it's like an investment thing. This Chanel shearling bag, while we're on it, is I believe also from Prefall 2020. I like it. I like shearling. So. It, I'm just telling people like it's kind of waste of money. It doesn't make you happy. I am so confused by this. It's a waste of money. This closet is valued at $500,000 with the Birkins. I think it's over that. I'm confused. This feels ironic to me. It does not make you happy, but you know, I, I like to look at it. It's more memories and it's like accomplishing something that I always wanted as a kid. So it's more of that for me. This has like the Jeffree Star vibes. I wanted to buy all these things because I was sad as a kid. And like, that's fine. Who am I to judge why people buy things that they buy? But I think you should buy things because you want them and you want to use them and you like them and you enjoy them. You should spend money on things that you really cherish. But who am I? <laughs> All right, now that you've seen my first closet, let's- Also, Balenciaga bag, Yves Saint Laurent bag next to it. I think that $500,000 estimation is conservative. As I look at the Valentino Rockstud shoes on the bottom there, as I look at Louis Vuitton fall 2020 cloud items, Versace robes, there's a lot of Louis Vuitton monogram purses, Moschino. There's a lot of stuff there. Okay, glitter. Okay. I just want to say, if you guys ever see these certain Louis Vuitton, maybe Gucci, maybe Prada bags that say like Voyager or Mykonos on them, this is really a reference to, I believe, mid 19th century style of traveling. Essentially when people or super duper rich people would go traveling on different boats or trains, essentially put stickers on the different items because it would tell you where that item was going. It would help sort of be able to sort people and sort their luggage by the destination. So if you're going to London, you wouldn't want to put a Paris sticker on it. It comes from the sort of upper echelon travel aesthetic. Before they continue, I am seeing a Louis Vuitton bag at the top there that again is that fall 2020 Virgil Abloh collection in my opinion one of the best collections he's ever done I really think that take on the monogram was fun I think it's in that sort of vein of Marc Jacobs playing on kitschy aspects of Vuitton just regular sort of like never full like a little mini speedy but there's also this Papillon bag that's in there that has the Murakami cherry blossoms on it with the multicolor Louis Vuitton monogram which was a Murakami collaboration I believe was spring 2003 so you have a little mini speedy version. You have a pochette, I believe that that's called. And then the Alma bag, which is the sort of like curved top one. A couple of Gucci Dionysus bags, a Vernie monogram Alma bag. The Vernie was developed by Marc Jacobs, I believe in like 1999, 2000, one of those collections and is pretty much a take on like glossy fabric. Oh, and the Jeff Koons Monet bag. I just don't really get it. Like I get Jeff Koons is like, I don't know, like, an art troll or whatever. They must have had to license those images, which that must cost a lot of money. But I guess LVMH can pay for it. Closet, and this is kind of like. 
MCM, that Hello Kitty bag at the top left, Balenciaga. It looks like below that is a Balenciaga City bag in pink. Moschino is there. Chanel, another Balenciaga City bag. A Balenciaga bag that looks like a Louis Vuitton. Alma bag. The Givenchy. Oh God, what is that called? Antigone. Right next to the Antigone bag is like a little Fendi fur charm, which I still kind of love. I had a second bedroom as my closet, so there was like no, there was. No I want to talk about that Moschino bag too because it's from that Barbie collection. Jeremy Scott doing a very amazing job of taking biker jacket, turning it into a bag, and then doing it in a pink version. I'm here for it. Fashion is gonna be another one. So a lot of this is just like my nice things. So we'll have to build a third closet. So I feel like I'm seeing another little Fendi bag charm on a Fendi backpack, I presume. Balenciaga oh, the, oh, the clothes. Brand. Louis Vuitton is still my favorite designer brand. I think if you're gonna buy a designer purse, Louis Vuitton like never goes out of style. And mm -hmm. it's pretty affordable. It's They're usually less than $5,000. Affordable is not the thing I'd say, but. It is the Jessica Simpson one. Takashi Murakami who? Mark Jacobs who? Jessica Simpson. Jessica Simpson and her Louis Vuitton collaboration bag. Iconic, very much so. Where would we be without? And I, you can tell that I use this like all the time. That Louis Vuitton Stephen Sprouse people. It's beautiful. But bring it I back. I still love it. I think it's my favorite iconic. one. Don't and bring it back, yeah, but like, Susan just iconic. It's been carried around on newlyweds and it's probably my favorite. Yeah, like looking at it, it's probably my favorite purse. I love this purse. <laughs> this was my first. Good for Jessica day. Simpson. This is a really a solid first one. They're never classic. full. They'll never go out of style. It depends on who you ask. It'll never go out of style. I'll say that. Designer bag. Like honestly, I thought I was gonna have one and that's it. This is the good one, so I, I love it. Honestly, purses go up in value usually. I that Murakami collection really still has a grasp on a lot of people. People really still do love it. It's kind of iconic. I buy vintage purses for way more than their original price. Mm. Got it, because I saw Kate Hudson wearing it in that movie Bride Wars. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I thought it was really oversized, but it just, she was really skinny, so the bag- You know what, at least Trish is explaining work. where um, their inspiration or references come from, so that's good. The Moschino bag is, yeah. that's awesome, yeah. This is a little glossy flat bag. The Chanel backpack from the very iconic grocery store collection. My favorite, go-to, very iconic, Cardo Levine. Thank you very much. I like this colorway though, I don't think I've ever seen it. It's interesting. Also, that price is. <laughs> Something. This is my favorite thing. This is my Danger Days jacket. <laughs> Gerard what is Way, that? a replica. Oh, okay. So yeah, this. I have that no concept of what so my chemical romance. Uh, this jacket me is a replica of Michael Jackson's Beat It, but I cropped it. So the costume designers, the crystal encrusters, they're getting good, solid work from Trisha Paytas. This is an actual shirt from when Adam Sandler was in The Longest Yard. I <laughs> love Longest Yard and I love Adam Sandler. I also do kind of love YouTubers' obsession with buying things from movies. One of the DiMartino twins buys all or a lot of like the Scream Queens wardrobe, which I do find fascinating. This is something I wear, like anything that like has like a remnant of someone. I also collect right like now. old I dead ladies clothes. So like I can't judge, I just find it fascinating. <laughs> I actually wear this too. This is the jacket from Happy Gilmore. And he's at the end. Okay, so I presume Trisha bought that at auction. Good to know. And I love it so much. I ripped it off the framing. It was like on a frame and stuff. Not ripped it out of the frame. Somebody should tell Trisha that clothes do deteriorate. If it's something you really care about and don't really wear often, I put it back in a frame or in a protective garment bag in somewhere that's cool. And these slippers I usually wear when I'm in my closet. Louis Vuitton monogram slips. I love these. These light up. They're Lightning McQueen. I got these off StockX for like $1,000. I'm in disbelief. I shouldn't be, but I am. Retail price is like 60 Oh, I didn't show these, but these are my favorite things. This is my favorite thing maybe in my whole world. And my chemical romance Gerard Way sneakers. They really love the custom. The the triple S sneakers, the Gucci espadrilles. And these are Helena shoes. Ye more so, Yeezys. Uh, there's this. Exactly. You could spend so a you could spend a real them. long time in there. Yeah, like to be them. honest. Painted on there. And there should be more clothes like showing because that I would find very interesting. These are Dear Evan Hansen, and the movie's coming out September twenty fourth. I'm not sponsored. I just love them. And then this is from. Um, I shouldn't laugh, yeah. but I am. So those are my closet tours. Thank you so much, Trisha. I've learned so much a lot today. Of sparkly. Just know I money have. can't buy happiness and it can't buy style either. So just, you know, enjoy. I'm gonna it refrain from saying what I wanna say because that's just me. That was an experience. I don't think I've ever experienced something so experiential before in my life. It wasn't horrific. Like there was some good stuff. It's like the Moschino, the Prada, even the Chanel, I'm not really obsessed, but like there was some decent stuff in there. A lot of it I don't really understand, but I feel like that was to be expected. 
it felt like there was a lot of genuine stuff from their different eras in life. A lot of it is super duper trendy, a lot of it is super duper driven by what other people say, do, show, wear, buy, etc, etc, as they mentioned. It genuinely could have been a lot worse. So thank you guys so much for watching, I will see you guys in the next one, and TTYL.